Can you make profit from the newly released Vivid Voltage Booster Box? Today, we find out. Let's go, baby. Yo, what's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Hopefully, you're all doing good, and today we are back continuing the Can You Make Profit series, a series where we look at a booster box, whether it's new or old, and we open the packs inside, put the cards and the pulls into a spreadsheet, and then research the value of those cards to see if we made profit, broke even, or if we lost money opening the box. And the box that we're going to be featuring today is none other than the newly released Vivid Voltage box. As you can see down here, it's beautiful. It's got the chunky Pikachu inside it, and uh, it's got Celebi, the amazing rares as well and I've been opening this box recently and I can tell you that there's definitely value inside this box but with a few strings attached and let me get into what those strings are the first issue for me and a big red flag is the print quality guys so I don't know if you know, I've been opening a lot of this box pretty much to get single cards updated to my store, Pokeran.net. For those who don't know, I do have a store where we sell booster boxes, we sell accessories, binders, sleeves, etc. But we also sell single cards from all the new sets and any old sets that we end up opening here on the channel. You guys even saw my stream where I opened a thousand packs from this set. And the main issue is the print quality, specifically the centering. As many of you guys have pointed out to me as well, the centering in this set has been really bad. And if it's not completely miscut, as you can see with some pictures here from the cards that I pulled, it's badly off center, okay? And while the miscuts are kind of cool because you could get like a PSA graded card modified as a miscut grade, the other cards that are just badly off center but not enough to get the OC grade are really bad. And the other issue with this set is that it's really highly priced right now because of lack of supply, pretty much. We couldn't get many as a store. I know many other stores couldn't get a hold of any either. We placed a big order for Poker Rand, but we just got allocated by a lot. And I know many other stores have got a huge network of suppliers that charge more than the main supplier. And once they start sourcing the boxes at a higher price, it means that they have to start putting the price up as well. With that being said, though, a lot of the cards from this set are worth a decent amount of money. The Amazing Rares are going for quite a lot. The Chunky Pikachu Rainbow Rare is going for an obscene amount. So it is actually a good box to open for value in my opinion but let's see if we're lucky here today and as always i want to give a disclaimer for this video the box i open right now will not be the same as the box that you open it's going to be very different the prices that i'm looking at on ebay and maybe my store as well are not necessarily the market price it's just the research that i've made on this day so please do keep that in mind however what i wanted to speak to you guys about is the fact that recently i've been going crazy on this channel working super hard throughout all the hype and i think i'm starting to burn out so my wife laura suggested that i take a break and i want to take a break but but I feel like it would be a bad decision to take a break right now with the hype on the channel. We've got to still grow, we've got to still hit these numbers, and we've got to still bring content out to you guys. So what I thought I would do is, instead of taking a break, I thought I might take a break from videos, but do a few more streams this week, okay? So instead of like racing to get a video out the day before, and then my wife editing it, etc., I thought what I'd do is, I'd get some packs, I'd get some booster boxes, and we'd just open them up on stream with you guys. The content's not going to go anywhere, the, the streams will stay up as videos, VODs after, you know, but I'm just tired. It's like a race that I can't keep up with right now so if that's okay with you guys I might do that this week but for now let's get into the packs baby what a long intro but I feel like you guys are here for the intro you guys are here for the information not just the packs okay so let's get into this box and let's hope we get some good pulls and for those who are new to this series we do open the packs quite quick because obviously we want to get to the uh, profit side of the video the actual value side of the video so we do kind of open these uh, Speedy Gonzalez style <laughs> And the first pack we have, oh my gosh, the first pack we have pulled a Alakazam. Okay, guys, a beautiful card, a great card. But the issue is, again, this highlights it, the centering is awful, okay? Awful, man. Like, I have opened a lot of these boxes, okay? I must have pulled around... 10, 11, 12 Alakazam V full art so far, and all of them have had this exact same issue with the centering. Thick left border, thin right border, okay? Consistent with every single Alakazam. And even if I get a box that has good centering overall, the Alakazam is still poor. So I'm not sure what it is about it. I was really good to because I would love to get some of these um, in mint condition, perfect centering, but unfortunately it's not the case. However, still a good pull right there. Still the value is there, of course, because it's still an Alakazam. You know, centering is not everything. But yeah, there we go. First pull, Alakazam V. Get in there. Okay, I, see look, when I open packs on camera, I always get in the habit of doing the card trick. Like even when I'm supposed to open it quick, and even when I'm supposed to open it really speedy, I still do the card trick, man, it's crazy. We've got a Ryolu Reverse Hollow right there, and a Burnett Regular Rare. I need to split up the rares, the Reverse Hollows, and the Energies, because we do sell all those things split out on the website, Pokemon.net. Of course, we don't sell energies right now, but I still keep them just in case. I feel like one day we'll do a bundle of all the energies, but I mean, there's no, is there value in energies? Hey, there we go. We got the Charizard, okay. And what I will say, did I miss the Reverse Holo? I did, the Ninkata Reverse Holo. The good thing about this set, well, not, not the good thing, uh, but one of the things about this set is that this Charizard right here, 
is super valuable. <laughs> Way more valuable than you think a rare card would be or should be. It's pretty insane, actually. So if you do get a Charizard, especially if you get a Reverse Holo Charizard, you'll make back a lot of the value just in that card alone, which is crazy for it being a non holo rare. Um, so yeah, pretty bizarre, but people of Charizard, they always have done. So uh, yeah, the Charizard tax is there. Shout out Graded Gem. Right, we have a Regirock, a Reverse Holo Lycanroc, and a Regirock Holo card. Okay, and the Holos still add up, guys. The Holos all do add up. Now, obviously, when we do get into the, uh, the eBay side of things and the price side of things, you'll notice that the eBay prices and my prices on Pokemon.net are a lot different, okay? My prices are way higher than eBay, uh, and there's, there's a couple reasons for that. The first reason being, I think a lot of the people on eBay are undervaluing themselves. So if you do sell on eBay and you're looking to get some money for your cards, obviously, you want to make the sale, okay? Hey, there we go. We got Ization, amazing, rare, lovely to see that. That's fantastic. Um, one of my favorite amazing rares as well, actually. I feel like, obviously, Rayquaza, Celebi, Jirachi are all cool because they're older Pokemon, Raikou, etc. But the Zacian, wow, the Zacian is really nice. I think the colors really work, the rainbow works, the design works. So, yeah, there we go. Love to see that. Zacian, amazing rare. But yeah, regarding eBay prices and Pokemon prices, uh, first of all, I think people undersell themselves. I know you're trying to get sales. I know you're trying to get the money back so you can put it into other things. But sometimes being patient, I think, will pay off. You know, I think uh, a lot of people are undercutting each other. And if everyone didn't undercut each other, these cards would be a lot more valuable. Like, obviously, I'm not talking about, you know, Aracuda Reverse Holo. I'm not talking about undercutting that, but I'm speaking about the Amazing Rares dropped quick. They are very common, though, to be fair, so I'm not saying they should be super high, but, you know, especially the full art. Some secret, secret Rares are probably a better example, actually. Some of the Secret Rares are really low in value, like 10, 11 pounds. And if you think about a box, like, you're only going to get one, usually, in a box. Sometimes you get two, but sometimes you also get zero in a, in a box, you know? Hey, Snorlax Holo, that's a good pull right there. Uh, this has been selling like crazy on my store but yeah sometimes you don't even get a secret in a box and people are selling it for like 11 12 pounds obviously popularity does play a part obviously you know if it's a card a pokemon a slash v max for example that no one likes then yeah fair enough but you gotta remember, someone's favorite Pokemon out there might be Aegislash, you know? They might really be a big fan of Aegislash, and they might be willing to pay the price of that secret rare because the rarity is, you know, it is a limited rarity. It's a secret rare, you know? <laughs> you don't get many of them. So that's the first reason, pretty much, in a nutshell. But the second reason is the fact that eBay, the quality... Hey, there we go. We got Zacian and Zanazenta, the two legendary Pokemon from the Sword and Shield game. Generation 8, Galar region. Zacian, the Sword Pokemon, and then Zanazenta, the Shield Pokemon. And the Vaporeon, rare, which is nice. So yeah, the second thing is the packaging, man. Like, I've ordered... Obviously, I buy a lot of cards on eBay myself. Some things aren't always available on websites. Uh, so you gotta go on eBay, you gotta hunt, you gotta bid. And uh, what I find a lot of the time is the quality, the condition of these cards. Or not even not the condition, sorry. Well, that is a part of it, you know, people saying that a card is near mint even when it's excellent. People saying their card is mint even when it's nowhere near mint. That is an issue, but the main issue for me is that the way they package the cards, okay? You get cards stuck between two pieces of tape, um, which I know that it's better than nothing, but, you know, not sleeved in the middle of it. I had a, uh, I had someone who put it in a, uh, recently actually, they put it in a, a semi-rigid, an ultra pro semi-rigid, and they just put the card straight into this, and it was a hollow as well. It was a shining Celebi. Um, they put the card straight into it like this, and look how much that's going to scratch the card, right? You know, always sleeve your cards first before you do put it in to semi-rigids or top loaders, etc. I also had the sticky tab. Sometimes people put little post-it notes on the back of their cards, and the reason they do do this i used to do this actually until psa said they don't like it anymore anyway these are what they are little post-it notes look so what people do is what often people used to do is they used to get one of these put it on the sleeve okay attach it to their sleeve the reason people use these tabs is so when the psa grader or when the person buying the card wants to take the card out instead of putting their fingers in and getting it all mixed up all you do is you pull the tab and the card comes out. Perfect. It's actually an ingenious way of doing it. psa don't like it when you do that anymore for some reason grader gem told me not sure why they don't like that but they don't, so now they suggest taking it off. Um, but what the seller did, the person I bought it from, is he did this. He put the, like, like how stupid is this? He put the actual post-it note on the card. Like, look, look, he put it on the card, guys. And this wasn't with a common card like I'm doing now. This was with a Charizard VMAX full art <laughs> from uh, Darkness of Blaze. Like, what the hell is this? Like, yes, it does pull it out, but you attached sticky residue to the card. So yeah, that's another reason why my prices on Pokemon are higher. You're going to get a better level of a service. First of all, the trust there, then the packaging is there, then the care for the cards is there. It's all there, you know, so the price is a premium. However, my prices are a little bit high right now as we speak because I haven't had time. <laughs> I haven't had a chance yet to actually go and review the prices and drop them a little bit. So I need to do that soon, but um, still, you're still going to always see a premium on Pokemon.net, but you pay for the premium, you know? You, you pay for the premium, guys. That's what good quality service does, you know? 
That's why people shop at Pokerand rather than shopping on eBay because the trust is there and the uh, the level of professionalism is there in the packaging and the entire process, you know? So yeah, that's why. In this video, however, we are going to uh, use eBay prices just because uh, obviously all of you guys at home don't have Pokerand or don't have websites. Some of you may do, and if you do, then congratulations, keep smashing it. But um, I assume the majority are going to be selling their cards on eBay, so we're going to use eBay prices a little bit later when we do get there. But so far, I'd say a pretty good box. Obviously, we didn't get the high-value amazing rares like the Rayquaza, Jirachi, Celebi. The reason Jirachi is so expensive, by the way, guys, for those who didn't already know this, is the playability. Uh, it's actually the most playable amazing rare out of the uh, out of the six. Hey, loud red into explode. So that's why there's a that's why there's a premium on the Jirachi card. But yeah, the Rayquaza is uh, the the highest price amazing rare right now. I also anticipate the amazing rares to go back up in price as well. I think we've got something in here, guys. I saw a bit of a, a shining border. Let's see. We have a full art Drapion. Let's go. And the center and again is not perfect, but it's much better than the Alakazam. The left hand side is a lot thicker than the right hand side. But uh, yeah, this is one of the better boxes that I've opened. <laughs> Some have been completely miscut. Oh, also, I want to make sure that you guys are aware. We did actually announce the winners of the Vivid Voltage giveaway on the channel. And uh, I announced it on the live stream on the uh, the Neo Revelation First Edition box break on Saturday. But for those who don't know, for those who didn't hear or weren't there, the winners are Jacob Crandlemere, Yannick Shriver, Stephen Evans, Oliver Muthasami, David Liljequist and Jack Jenkins. So congratulations, guys. You guys have won yourself a Vivid Voltage booster box each. They'll be getting sent out this week, uh, if not already been sent by the time you guys have seen this video. Um, so yeah, congratulations, guys. And for those who unfortunately didn't win on this occasion, don't worry, there'll be more giveaways in the future. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys look out for that. There were around 5,000 entries, by the way, around 5,000 downloads of our Vivid Voltage set completion spreadsheet, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you guys for the support. But yeah, don't worry, there'll be some more giveaways in the future. And is this a pack that I didn't open? Oh my gosh. This is the pack that I didn't open, no way. Colossal V in that pack. When I went to my little rant about the post-it notes, I actually put a pack to my left and I actually forgot to fully open that one. So that's funny. But I do really like Vivid Voltage, guys. I think the set's amazing. I think the cards are great. I think the, the Pikachu is great. I really like it. But the issue is, like I said, is uh, the print quality, or at least for me. I know it's not been the case for everyone in America. Uh, I know, for example, Gemmin Pokemon, he pulled an Alakazam in his, one of his first booster boxes and he said it was perfect centering. Uh, so I'm very jealous. He's got one in the centering's fire. I'm like 12 deep right now and the centering on them has been awful. But yeah, right, let's continue this. Genesis Reverse Holo and an Ampharos V. Um, the see, this is a perfect example. On eBay, the price for the Ampharos V was really low when I first looked and I was first re researching the prices for Pokerand, the singles on our website. Uh, Ampharos was really cheap, really, really low value. However, on my store, it was selling like crazy. So the price was lower on my store as well, but it was selling like crazy. For example, Galarian Dominatan V might have been the same price as Ampharos V, but the Ampharos V was selling like crazy more. I actually put the price up on my Ampharos because of how fast it was selling. So that's another example of why you don't have to always look on eBay. Again, another example here, Jolton Reverse Hollow. People really like this card, but on eBay, people would list it really low. I think on our store, it's like three pound because the demand is there, you know? If we put cards up and they sell straight away, we're, we're going to increase the price, you know, supply and demand. That's what it's all about. I, I don't want stock to disappear on my website um you know so I try and increase the prices here and there to make oh there we go baby there we go baby it's not the pikachu v max rainbow rare but it is the oranguru gold card which i think is fantastic i love this card oranguru has got a, such a great shiny as well and just complemented with the green uh i guess twig brush bush thing here thingy um fan with the gold on the back it's just fantastic so i oh, look at that Look at that. I love this card. I have no idea what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Supply and demand. The price has increased. Yeah. If I see a card fly on the website, of course, I'm going to put the price up a little. I'm talking, I'm talking like 50p a pound, you know, each time to make sure that it stabilizes a little bit. And uh, obviously, we get a good price for it. But also, it starts selling over the course of a few days rather than instantly. That's why, by the way, the booster boxes are increasing bit by bit on Pokerand as well. Uh, obviously, we'll always sell as low as possible. But if you get a case like Viva Voltage where we don't get many to start with, we have a, such a small supply and they're gonna go in minutes, we have to raise the price a little bit, you know? So I think we sold it at like 110, I think that's what our price was for uh, Vivid Voltage. And I know Darkness of Blaze got up to 120 at one point just because the demand was so crazy. I think we sold like 288 booster boxes in a couple of hours on the store, which is crazy. And we got le we got less Vivid Voltage than we did for that restock of uh, Darkness of Blaze, which, yeah, it's a big problem on the store. We're trying to figure it out. Obviously, we're a new store, but we, but the demand is crazy on the store. So we're uh, we're trying to build our network of suppliers. We're trying to get suppliers in America. We're trying to get other suppliers in the UK. So if anyone does have any suppliers and doesn't have any contacts, please let me know. I'm in talks with a few right now, which is good. But yeah, more stock will be coming to Pokerand. We will start getting into stock. But like I say, that, that's why price 
does increase with the booster boxes. I also want to point out something for those who don't know, booster boxes, okay, the retail price of a booster box is £140. So when you guys speak about, not my store, I'm not complaining about you guys, I'm not talking about you guys complaining about my store, uh, but when I hear talk of people complaining that stores are putting booster boxes above retail, Drapion V right there, I want to make sure you guys are aware that the retail price for a booster box is actually £140, okay, 140 GBP. Just because certain stores and certain people sell the booster boxes for £95, £100, doesn't mean that when they go to 110, 120 that they're going over retail. They're not, guys. The retail is 140 because they way to work it out is they work it out per pack, okay? So retail for booster boxes is worked out on a per pack basis of £3.99 in the UK. £4 GBP pretty much. £3.99, okay? That's how it's worked out. Because booster boxes aren't supposed to be sold as booster boxes, they're supposed to be sold as individual packs. That's why when you order from the distributor, you always see CDU, which is case display unit. So you're buying a booster pack, but you're buying a case display unit of 36 booster packs, pretty much. So the retail of them is £140. It's just that everyone always undercuts each other for the booster boxes. That's why you see the lower price. So don't be surprised when you do see stores put the, uh, the prices up with the booster boxes. That's just because they're literally undercutting so much that it's not affordable for them right now to actually sell at that lower price because the, I tell you the cost price of these booster boxes are, is a lot it's a lot more than you think the margin on the booster boxes is so so small I was so surprised when I got into it I was thinking how are people making money this way like how are they operating as a business so when you do see the stores and the distributors supply drop you will expect to see the prices go up oh 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 we got a Togekiss VMAX right there Let's go, baby. Oh, 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 we have pulled the reverse holo Charizard right there, people, which is, you know, that's money. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be very blunt. I'm gonna be very blunt with it. That is money right there. Reverse holo Charizard, let's go. That's gonna be good for our spreadsheet later on in the video. And um, yeah, nice one. We've got a Dust Noir holo at the same time. See, so yeah, hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying here. Hopefully this makes sense to you. You know, maybe a bit more of a behind the, and it's, it's not behind the scenes. I'm still here in front of the camera, but it's a little bit of a look into how we do things on Poker End and how stores operate. Maybe you guys wanna see more content like that. Maybe I should do more videos around the store you know how we operate the store um how we run the business etc and uh, it might be a good way for me to learn as well as you guys learn you know so let me know if you want to see that type of content we've got an Oshawa right there we've got a shift tree and it looks like we've got the last two packs here ladies and gentlemen of the booster box and i'd say so far it's a pretty solid box to be fair obviously it could be better everything always can be but um Oh, there we go. It just got better, ladies and gentlemen. It just got better. We have got a double secret rare box right here. And as I explained earlier in the video, you're not always guaranteed to get a double secret rare box, okay? Often you get one secret rare. I've had many boxes, like three in a row the other day where I had no secret rare at all. Uh, so it does happen. But obviously right here, we could have got that Pikachu VMAX, which would have sent things absolutely through the roof. But we did get Colossal VMAX, which is a really nice pull regardless. And we're very lucky to get two secret rares in this box. So just be aware, again, when we do look at the value, you may not get a booster box like this this you may get a different lower pull rate box um so keep that in mind when we go into the prices and we got one last pack right here what can we get three secret rares i'm kidding i'm kidding we have a two cannon reversed and a quag size so let's quickly have a look at the pulls before we do go into the spreadsheet side of things and this of course is in no particular order well in fact it's actually in a it's in a back to front order because we are going back to front colossal v secret rare orbital v dust noir hollow charizard reverse hollow togekiss v max shaman hollow drapion v dialga hollow ampharos v the secret rare gold oranguru colossal v zamazenta amazing rare drapion full art electrode hollow snorlax hollow zation amazing rare regirock Hollow, Charizard, non hollow, regular rare, and a Alakazam V. So here are all the pools that we're going to use and input into our spreadsheet. And then we're going to go research all the prices of these and we'll see if we've made profit on this box or if we lost money or if we actually broke even. Let's go and see the value of this booster box, guys. I will see you on the other side. All right, here we are. We are now back for the spreadsheet portion of the video. I actually did not put this one together. Laura did it for me. Thank you, Laura. Appreciate you. Uh, I was doing my evolution stream. You guys probably saw that yesterday. The live stream where our box broke four evolutions booster boxes. Congratulations to all the pulls. It was absolutely amazing. Only one hollow Charizard pulled in that one, actually, but we did pull a few more other Charizards, some special ones. So make sure you go and check that video out if you haven't already. However, let's get focused on this video right here. Can you make profit from a Vivid Voltage booster box? And the answer is, Yes, it looks like you can. Again, remember the disclaimer I made at the start of this video. Your box may vary. This is just a rough example, but my box <laughs> was a pretty good box. We didn't get the Pikachu. Of course, that would have made it an absolutely insane profit if we did pull that Pikachu. But instead, we did pull two secret rares, which you can see right here. We've got the Oranguru secret rare, the gold one, and we've got the Colossal VMAX secret rare. And uh, those two cards... 
Oh, Laura, you put five secret rare colossal VMAXs in. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's the, I was going to say 150 profit from one booster box. Get me more. Um, but there we go. We fixed that right there. One secret rare colossal VMAX, not five. And uh, it looks like the uh, total is 180 pounds uh, GBP total, and the profit is 70 pounds total. So we were lucky to get that extra colossal VMAX, but say if we didn't get one, we still have actually made profit. And that is probably because of. The amazing rares, I'm guessing. Yeah, let's take a look at this in, in depth. Let's go through one by one, okay? So again, these are eBay prices. These are not Pokeran.net prices. Our prices are a lot more expensive than these. I do need to go in the store actually and drop a few prices just because uh, obviously price goes down a little bit after the boxes are released. So I need to go and reflect that on the website. But obviously for reasons explained earlier, Pokeran will be a little bit more expensive. But for you selling these cards on eBay, this is what you're going to get. Remember, you have to pay eBay fees, which I think are around 10%. PayPal fees as well, plus shipping and postage. But that's all in the discretion of the seller, i.e. you. Um, um, that's up to you to work into your margins, you know, depending on where you're sending it, depending on what posters you use, etc. But this is a rough example of what things are looking like. So the Alakazam V Full Art was £15, okay? And the way Laura checks the prices, by the way, you go onto eBay, type in your card, type in your number. So literally Alakazam V, 172 out of 185. Type that into eBay or paste that into eBay. Go down on the left-hand column on the filters and change it to sold prices. Don't look at prices that are on eBay. Look at what they're selling for, okay? And that's what Laura's done in this video. So... £15 roughly for the Alakazam V. £7 for the Charizard Rare. That's crazy, right? A regular rare, non holo Charizard, £7. That's over triple the price of the Regirock Hollow. So Regirock Hollow is going for £2. Charizard, regular rare, £7. Zacian V going for £15 right there as an amazing rare. And again, Zacian is not even the most expensive amazing rare. If you've got a Rayquaza, which is very, you know, very easy to do in a, in a, in a booster box, there are only six amazing rares. So you've got a one in six chance of getting that Rayquaza in every box, which is kind of cool. Um, so £15 for the Rayquaza right there. £3 for the Snorlax. That's a quite high priced hollow. £2 as a hollow. Drapion V, full art, £9. Zamazenta, amazing rare. Still £15 for probably the lowest value amazing rare. In, I imagine, right? I think that's the lowest value. Oranguru, there we go. Oranguru secret rare. That is a gold card, so one of the best secret rares you can get. Obviously not the Pikachu. Um, £25, very nice. Ampharos V, again, Ampharos V, £3. Mine have been flying on the store. So again, that's the case where I think that card is undervalued, especially compared to the Colossal V. I do think the Colossal V, though, is actually playable in a few decks, but Ampharos is Ampharos, what a Pokemon that is. Dialga Hollow, £2. Drapion V, £2.49. Shaman Hollow, £2. Togekiss VMAX, £4. That's an example there where I think that's criminally undervalued. Togekiss VMAX. Togekiss, one of the a fan favorite Pokemon, definitely a really good Pokemon, especially in Sword and Shield as well. In the VGC era, one of the best competitive Pokemon. And I know competitiveness doesn't really, shouldn't really relate to eBay card prices, TCG prices, but I feel like I've really bonded with. Is that is that the right thing? I've really enjoyed Togekiss this season, and for that reason, I'd be more likely to purchase it as a card in the TCG. And I'm sure a lot of people like that. So I don't really want to offer advice ever, but. Guys, £4 Togekiss VMAX. If you can buy one for that, I would recommend that. Get that graded with Graded Gem and then PSA. And then, yeah, I'm sure that card in the PSA 10 is not going to be a £4 card. You know, £50, £60, £70 at least, in my opinion, in a PSA 10 if you can get that. So, yeah, Togekiss VMAX, criminally underrated. Especially the Rainbow. If you can get the Rainbow, then I I I'd spend £150 for a Rainbow PSA 10 Togekiss VMAX. So, yeah. Charizard Reverse Holo. Look, at Charizard Reverse Holo is f 4 Three over three times more expensive than the V Max Togekiss. Dust Noir Hollow, £1.50, or Beetle, £2.50, and then the Colossal V Max, uh, £18. And also, you got the bulk as well. We sell our bulk at 10p per card, so a pack of 100 cards for £10. Probably a little bit on the expensive side, but you can get that if you, if you try it, I think. And um, so £30 there. And the code cards go for £7.20, 36 of them at 20 pence per code card. So that will, in our instance, give us a grand total of £180 and a profit of £70. Now, usually we do look at the PSA prices of these sets, like PSA 9, PSA 10, etc. But of course, with Evolutions... Wait, it says Evolutions, Laura. Vivid Voltage Profit. Sorry, guys. Should have done it myself. I'm kidding, Laura. I love you. Thank you so much. But of course, with Vivid Voltage, it's uh, it's such a brand new set that it's really hard to get cards graded that fast. There are a few in America, a few people in America who have got the Pikachu Rainbow and the Pikachu VMAX graded, but that's just because they pay an obscene amount to get it done there and then. They probably live in California and probably paid for the walk-in service or something like that. So yeah, in general, we can't really use PSA prices and we didn't pull anything that was uh, that has been graded yet anyway. So yeah, I do expect this to these prices to rise. Obviously, as you guys know, Vivid Voltage is a very underprinted set right now. Out of the gate, our box cost £110. Back in what? Back in May, 
June for Rebel Clash. We were doing it at 95 per box. Obviously, since then, prices have risen because of the demand, because of the supply as well. But out the gate, Vivid Voltage was selling at £110, and we literally sold our entire allocation in two minutes. So that just shows you the demand is crazy right now. And you look at the long-term future, five you know, to ten plus years, out of Sword and Shield, which box are you going to be looking to get? Um, Rebel Clash, maybe. Sword and Shield, there are a few good, solid, strong trainers, full arts in Sword and Shield. Dauntless of Blaze, maybe. Charles of VMAX, the best you know, card in that set. Whereas Vivid Voltage, you look at the different cards you can get, I'm talking like long, long term now. You're looking at the amazing rares. You're looking at the Pikachu, the rainbow Pikachu. I feel like that's going to be a strong card forever. So yeah, I mean, Vivid Voltage, a solid box. If you're going long term, super long term, no box is really a, ever a bad purchase if you can hold it long enough. The most important thing is just fun to open. So the most important thing is it's really fun to open. If you can get Vivid Voltage for 110, 120, I recommend it. So yeah, very exciting set, very fun set. I think it's got value. I think it's definitely worth it. You know, even in this case, we've got two secret rares. We did really well on the monetary side. But even if you did lose a few pounds in this box, it's still really fun to open. And I still don't think you'll be upset at paying the price that it's going for right now. But guys, I think that's it from me today. Hopefully you learned a lot in this video. Hopefully it was very informative, but also hopefully it was enjoyable and entertaining for you guys as well. If it was both of those things or either of those things, even if it wasn't, please consider leaving a like on this video. It really does help the channel. If you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, this is a really popular series on the channel. I try and do this with any booster box that I open. I've got some Cosmic Eclipse in the back as well. If you want to see me do this for a Cosmic Eclipse booster box, make sure you leave a like and let me know in the comments. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I post every single day on the channel and I'll be posting something or streaming something tomorrow. So guys, I'll see you tomorrow. But for now, though, take care and peace out.